I realized when I made this video I didn't have an introduction. I just started jumping right into the work. So this is the completed toilet. I know it's at the start of the video. But the first step is to remove the lag bolts, the water supply, and the electrical connections under the lid. Lift it out and take it out in the shop and go through the, uh, the process of rebuilding. A bit of a dirty job, but the results are great. And once it's complete, it works very well. It's in my left 220. So I had to take the water connection off, the electrical connection, the four lag bolts, and, and just lift it off of there. Of course, I'll need to replace the wax ring when it goes back together, but that's where we are. Now we need to take it out and take it apart and rebuild. We have the toilet outside the uh, coach now. Turned it upside down to be able to work on it. And you can see the various components. We have the, uh, the motor here, which still works good. We'll just clean it up. Various plumbing coming in. You got a couple of uh, overflow lines and a, a vacuum breaker line. And this is what they call the, uh, the hopper. So we're going to take that out. There's a couple of J bolts here, right there and, and over here. And I think you can see down here at the bottom where they connect to the toilet. So we'll take those out, disconnect this hose, disconnect the wiring, and lift that whole hopper out of there. And then we'll get busy getting it all cleaned up. Well, we've removed the hopper. You can see those bolts a little better now that hold the hopper against the uh, toilet itself. And that line is an overflow line here. And you have a vacuum breaker line as well, a real small line. And the vacuum breaker and the overflow connected here. You can see the small on the top and the larger on the bottom. And here's a view of the hopper. It's obviously been leaking, so it's ready for a rebuild. You'll see some various parts. This is a cam, and that is a part that I guess frequently breaks along with this small limit switch they've had problems with in the past. And of course the flapper assembly itself here, all of this is the uh, silicon where it's sealed up against the uh, against the bowl. And again you can see where it has been has been leaking all through here. So probably good that we're doing this. Um, be all this cleaned up and working properly. And um, I think I have all the parts I need, so we'll go on to the next step, and I'm going to take the motor off and get all of this cleaned up and apart and further cleaned and start to reassemble. The dirty job is a little cleaner now. I took the uh, porcelain outside and scrubbed it, being careful not to get the uh, electrical pieces wet. Scrubbed the uh, outside. I scrubbed under the bowl. I think it's... Uh, thoroughly disinfected now. So that's good and clean. I was able to get the hopper off. This is the piece that goes together like this and your flapper valve closes right here and it it uh, goes up against the uh, hole. So took all that out, took it apart. You can see here that there's a lot of rust from the screws. Very difficult to get out. In a couple of cases, I had to use vice grips and even drill a little bit. So the motor looks like it's in okay condition. A little bit of corrosion from the leakage. I decided not to replace that in this go around. Uh, maybe I should. But for now, I think I can wait on that. I am going to replace the cam. This cam is what they say breaks quite frequently. So I'll clean that up. And also the limit switch apparently um, has issues from time to time. So I do have those parts. And we're going to start to reassemble. I'll walk over here and show you the parts that I did buy. So here's the, uh, the parts 
that were purchased. It's Melanian Associates. There's their email. Very nice if you call them. They're very willing to help. And uh, for $318, I got everything I need to basically rebuild the toilet with the exception of the motor. Now this is a flapper valve, that's what closes. And mine had completely broken, that button was broken. It was cracked, you can see from some of the earlier videos. So we have a new one, a new cam. That's the unit that goes on the motor that triggers this to open and close as it rotates. A new vacuum breaker, a new arm. This is an extra seal I'm just gonna put in my spare parts. A new little switch there. And of course you see the new gasket as well. This came as a kit. Some of it came as a kit with that part number. The rest of them were individual parts. You can see the, the kit was the uh, flapper replacement assembly. So now I need to go ahead and put this apart. It did come with some, put this together on me. Comes with some instructions. I do have a, a new wax ring as well. So we'll put this together and then I'm gonna set it up on some boards, connect some water to it in a battery and, and test it before we go back in the coach to make sure there are no leaks. I'll probably let it set a couple days just to make sure. And then we will reinstall it. By the way, the uh, previous owners did a fantastic job keeping all the documentation. This is the original installation and service manual from 1995. You can see July 1994. And there's a whole lot of other documentation that came with the coach. So that really is valuable when you're trying to work on stuff. I have completed the overhaul of the uh, hopper assembly. I decided to go ahead and put a new motor. And that motor and gear assembly all comes as one part. The limit switch down here is an item that fails frequently, so I went ahead and replaced that. The cam unit here was cracked, and I think I, I'll try to show you. Well, it's hard to see the crack, but it was cracked down here. Well, there you go. You can see it right there. Right here. So that unit, that part is no good. I did keep the old motor for a spare. But the, uh, the cam assembly is new. The arm is new. And the flapper is new as well. So other than the body itself, all of this is new. I did install a new gasket with silicon around there as well to prevent it from leaking. And then this, this obviously butts up against the, uh, the bowl of the toilet. So to watch it work, I have a battery and a couple of leads going to the motor. You can see as that spins around, when it kicks that limit switch, it turns off. But you can see that it opens and closes using that small DC motor, the gear, the cam, and the arm. This arm is spring-loaded. So you have to be careful you don't put too much tension on it. You need to set that for the right amount of tension on the flapper so that it seals tightly and doesn't leak. The next step now is to install this back into the toilet with the J-bolts using silicon around here to seal it and then start to reassemble it and put it back in the bus. Well, I finished rebuilding the, uh, the toilet. I took a of water and dumped it in the bowl to make sure the hopper sealed. You had to put silicon rubber, silicon caulking around that seam between the porcelain and the hopper to seal it. And then you tighten up the J-bolts that uh, I think I showed during the disassembly. Here we've rebuilt the vacuum breaker. I went ahead and put a new control circuitry in it. I also did the uh, the new motor and cam and 
connecting mechanism, which I showed you previously. Now, one thing I did different, oops, my finger, I installed a circuit breaker here. The reason I did that is when the bus is not in use, I prefer that that flapper to not close tightly against the seat so that it doesn't deform. So what I will do, and I will try to show this, is I will simply push down the circuit breaker, let it run and then stop it just short. That way there's not continuous pressure on the seal. And uh, of course, when we're not using the bus, the black tank will have been flushed out. And I'll probably just set a towel in there just to make sure there's no smell that comes up through there. Because I think you just use a saw when I operated the mechanism, it's pretty much a direct drop into the black tank. So let's do that one more time. Okay, there it's fully closed. I'm gonna take the bucket of water. It seems to seal up pretty good. I don't see any dripping underneath. No dripping under there. But when you press the flapper to show you how it just drops directly into the black tank, let's watch. And then it closes again. My next step is to uh, take it into the coach and reinstall it with a new wax ring and give it a try. Well, I've put the toilet back into the coach, anchored down both sides and put the caps back on. The bowl is filling with water and, and holding properly. I'm cycling it through one operation here. So it's working really good. Just like it should. See, I have it all wired up here in the back. This is the vacuum breaker. I had to cut a little bit away just to give room for the lid. But I checked closely for leaks. I don't see any. Just adjust your, your uh, level of your water. Of course, I put the circuit breaker in here. But it seems to be working very well. So that project is complete and ready for use. I did notice a couple of things to be aware of. On mine, after I put it in, that was loose. The, uh, the nut and the gasket had to tighten it up. And if there is a leak, it'll drip right on top of the motor. Not the greatest design. This line here fills up your overflow line so you don't get any smell. But you can see it goes to the top of that fitting and it has a tendency to leak as well. So you need to watch to make sure that doesn't leak on either side. This bigger, that bigger plastic hose is your overflow line and it goes to the bottom of that plastic fitting where you see the bubbles. The vacuum breaker can drip a little bit out of the top. You'll see there's a seal. If you're just starting the toilet up and you haven't had water pressure on it, it's possible some water can get by there and drip down again into the floor. So whenever I start it up for the first time, apply pressure. I'm going to check to make sure that doesn't leak. Otherwise, great toilet. Glad to have that dirty job complete.